Hello and welcome to the Be Glad Movement. My name is Pollyanna and I am on a mission to bring you as many stories as possible of good coming out of bad and reasons to be glad. And today I'm joined by Lisa. Hi Lisa, thank you so much for um, joining me today. I'm going to just let you dive straight in and, and tell us your story. Okay, so um, yes, it's been quite adventurous my life, I would say so far. When I was a child, um, I had quite an abusive childhood, I guess, with my step-parent. Um, and it ended up meaning that I moved out from my childhood home and moved in with my dad. Right. Which was okay, but as a child and a teenage girl, um, living up and you know, growing up with your dad can be challenging with some, some things. Oh. Um, and I grew up quite quickly on learning how to do kind of housework and you know, that kind of thing. Um, but before I actually moved out, my sister had a brain hemorrhage when she was four years old. Um, and she was absolutely fine beforehand. Um, I was about ten years old when it happened. I still lived at home with mum and, and the stepfather. Um, and yeah, she was given 24 hours to live and then 48 hours to live and then 72 hours to live. Life support machine and, and all of that thing. Um, and to see her at four years old in intensive care, in a bed, with every you know tube coming out of her in every different orifice and, and the life support machine going on. For a ten year old it's actually quite scary. Yeah. Um, and I remember at the time kind of having to grow up because of that quite quickly as well. And it was I was exposed to quite a lot of things at a young age because of it. Um, disability for one, there was a lot of people that <coughs> excuse me would look at my sister because she was in a wheelchair or a big push chair at the time um, and they would like look twice and it, I can remember it used to really kind of hurt me that that was happening mm. um, but it made me realise that not everyone's the same Sure. Um, and things can happen to people. Um, she Thankfully she survived um, and she got over that she had a couple of brain operations um, and she became I hate saying this, but like a cabbage patch doll. That's right. the, the easiest way that I can describe how she became. So from being a little girl running around, having fun, causing havoc, me and her having fights as sisters do, yeah. um, pulling each other's hair out and all that kind of thing, <laughs> um, suddenly she became someone who, who was just sat there. Yeah. Um, and as a big sister, that's really difficult um, sure. because you want to protect, you want to look after, you want to help, um, and it, you kind of can't do that. So yeah, so she kind of carried on then until um, she was just before her tenth birthday. She died. Um, her body just gave up, and her breathing was very laboured, and the doctors could do nothing else for her. And unfortunately, she passed away. And it again, that was another whole grief, um, the loss. And and I was sixteen at the time, just about to take my GCSEs. Um, so again, it was you know the timing wasn't great and all the rest of it. But she she taught me so much with the way that she was. She couldn't speak, she couldn't move, she couldn't do anything. Right. But you could see her determination. You could see she still had a bit of a personality. Right. So um, you know if everyone was quiet and it was quite a particular moment, she'd end up yawning or something. You know right. just to kind of show her presence that, that she was still there. And other things have happened to me in my life. Um, I had an accident when I was 23 and I hit a wall at 40 miles an hour and nearly died. Okay. I was on a jet bike and um, a jet ski and hit the wall and ended up flying through the air and landing and somersaulted over a picket fence and hit my face as I landed and missed some rocks and oh loads of stuff I missed um, and, I, and I should have died really um, and psychic people have told me that Zara was there and my sister helping me through and guiding wow. me through the right, the right path to land as it were um, and because of that I've ended up having arthritis in my left leg and because of my ankle being broke and I've had four operations and learning to walk again and, and all that kind of thing and my last operation was this year and I was in plaster for three months again so and you know mentally that puts a lot of strain onto you but I keep thinking about what my sister had gone through right. and how can I moan with everything that she'd gone through right. um, but that doesn't always work and sometimes you kind of it gets you um, I suffered with depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, insomnia, fibromyalgia, you name it, I got labelled with it back in 2015 um, and I couldn't leave this house for three months. This sofa became what I did, where I led, everything happened on this sofa for three months um, because I just had enough. I had 26 years of, of crap really. Sure. Um, 
and I think everything just just came to a head with you know the, the abuse of childhood and my stepdad being emotionally physically and, and everything else abusive um, that happened to my sister kind of losing her twice mm. growing up with my dad which was amazing you know he was absolutely fantastic and, and lush but it, it does it's puts a strain on your childhood yeah. um, and then my accident in my early 20s then I had lots of failed relationships and abusive relationships that kind of thing and I think I just just got to that point where I was like oh my god I can't take this anymore yeah because I'd always been somebody who'd kept going right keep going how can I help you how can I help you uh, which is why I think part of um, the reason my business came about which is Eras Therapy my sister's name backwards Eras uh. Um, my dad actually came up with that, mm -hmm. um, in, which is about helping people, is because that's how I coped. Right. So over all these years, I coped by helping everybody else. Um, if I was having arguments with my stepdad the night before, before I'd go to school, in the morning I would talk to my friends about it on the bus, and then that would be it done, and then how could I help everybody else during the day, right. before I'd then come home and go back into the, the toxic environment. Um, and then I found crystal healing and angel cards and spiritual kind of stuff in my teenage years and then sort of help people do their angel readings. Right. And then with my ankle operation and, and accident, I found Reiki um, because it was quite painful when it got arthritic quite quickly. Mm. Um, so that's how I started doing Reiki to help myself because like I think most people and most therapists find you need to help yourself first. Sure before you can help other people and that's a massive lesson that we all have to learn I think yes. um, because you always want to help everybody else and and you know like we were saying earlier with the um, the mask and the aeroplane yeah so you've got to put your mask on first before exactly mask. Um, and that can be very difficult but if you kind of put that self-love and self-care and everything first and it does really help so yeah so that's how I kind of find Reiki um, and then when the depression kicked in it was very much, oh my god, you know, what, what, I, I've got no reason to live, I've had enough of this now, too much has happened to me. Um, I put post-it notes around the house of smiley faces to try and keep me going. and um, There was a little bit of perseverance left in my little toe that kind of kept me going and the thought of my sister. Mm. Um, and I was trying to think of things that I was grateful for. And I remember at the start, I just put three post-it notes up. One was my house because I felt safe. Right. One was my job because it was paying for me to have my house sure. um, and one was my car to, so I could get to the acupuncturist which is the only time I would leave the house wow. and that was the only things that I could think of that I was grateful for, nothing else. Um, maybe the cats actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then as time progressed and I started to do different therapies and hypnotherapy was one of them, acupuncture, um, talking therapies, EMDR. Um, which EMDR, I have to say, for anyone who hasn't had it, it's, it's very good for post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and some memories came back to me that I absolutely had no idea all happened. Mm -hmm. I dissociated at the time. So these memories came out during this EMDR therapy. And it is fantastic for dealing with trauma. Right. Because it starts to file away the, the bits of the trauma that are still floating around in your head. I see. Um, but I will say, it is like dipping yourself into hell, right. <laughs> coming back out and then sticking yourself in a washing machine. Okay. But the impact that it has and the recovery that you make because of it is incredible. Um, it was one of the main things that I felt was the turnaround. And in the future maybe I'd like to train in it myself because the, the change that you can see in somebody is, is just fantastic. Um, this was a, a memory I had locked away for 26 years and, and all of a sudden I was dealing with it. Um, right. So yeah, so that kind of happened and, and then Eras Therapy took off from that. Um, I'd also done a, a blog and a website called Daisy's Black Dog. It's had 25,000 hits. Um, I've not been very active on it in the last year, <laughs> I will say that. Um, but it, one night I was sat here at 3 o'clock in the morning or whatever time it was, might have been 1 o'clock in the morning, dosed up on sleeping tablets um, and nothing was working, I was still wide awake and right. I thought what can I do to help somebody, that's, that's what will get me out of this, what can I do to help. So I came up with my website and my blog which is the Days of Black Dog um, and I've got a Twitter page for that as well. Um, and yeah it's just a blog of how I felt during those months of the real despair and depression and uh, insomnia and anxiety and, and all of that kind of thing. Right. Um, and then how I came out of that um, and it kind of goes over until 
August of last year, so it's a two year blog really, uh -huh. and also the hints and tips, so everything that I tried, and I did try everything, right. um, I'm sure there's a lot more out there that I could, you know, there is more, but I did, there was lots of stuff, um, which is all on my website too, awesome. um, yeah, and, I, and then because of that I thought, okay, rather than, you know, go on a course, I, I've done courses in emotional freedom technique, um, I retook my Reiki too, I did a little bit more with tarot readings, because my tarot readings tend to turn into a bit of a counselling session okay. um, because they bring out things during the reading that people don't want to talk about right. and I think because of my experiences um, and I've been in debt as well for most of my life so not having money and that kind of thing and start and realising as well that you know I've bought myself some things that are expensive uh -huh. and I really struggle to do that and I've been like it's okay you, you deserve it, it's okay, you work hard, you earn your money, yes you can have that, um, but it's just stupid, you know, it's the, the self-limiting belief that you have that you don't necessarily deserve that. Um, so you know, and this, everyone's still a work in progress, everyone's still got lessons to learn, um, but I feel that a lot, how I can help people with my business is through my own experiences, and I really talk from, from the heart, I really talk from what's happened to me as opposed to a book I've read on psychology sure. Sure. and there's nothing wrong in that either mm -hmm. <laughs> just saying there's nothing wrong in that but I think there's a lot to be said about helping through your own personal experiences yeah I certainly find that people that have been hurt deeply are able to love deeply because they mm -hmm. don't want anyone else to experience what they've been through or at yeah. least if they are experiencing something similar to help them through it as quickly as possible yeah. so uh, you're sort of like the, the classic wounded healer if you like yeah yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about? Um, I'm going to say Zara, but it's not <laughs> Zara. <Arab. laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so basically, I am. Um, it's it's Reiki. Um, mm. I do some relaxation therapies as well, just to keep people in that. I mean, we give people that space, really. Yeah. Um, I find a lot of my friends are mums with two kids and they don't have that time for themselves. Sure. And when they have come to me, just to have that hour. Mm -hmm. is is just amazing um so yeah just a relaxation thing tarot readings i do as well mindfulness just introducing it into people's lives uh -huh. um you can do that while you're mindful eating having your tea don't put the telly on right. just have your you know your plate of food and really think about where did that potato come from uh -huh. you know it was in the ground originally it's then been harvested it's then the farmers then stored it somewhere sure. um it's then been delivered and you've bought it in the shop and then you've prepared it and now you're eating it and just bringing little things like that into your life can have massive changes. So I tried to introduce that to people as well. Um, EFT, emotional freedom technique, so the, the tapping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that helps as well with people, especially with public speaking, because you could just sit there and tap with a karate chop. Uh, okay. um, and that helps to, to calm you down and refocus. Right. Um, and yes, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Well, we'll share all the links below so that people can look you up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. I really appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Um, you know, shared a lot there, so thank you. If you like this video, please do hit the like and subscribe button and you'll get notifications when new videos are uploaded. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter if you search at Be Glad Movement. And please do get in touch if you've got a story to share. It doesn't matter if it's a story similar to something that someone else has already shared because I really do believe that your story and your voice can speak to someone at their time of need. So please do get in touch and we'll look forward to seeing you in another episode. Many thanks.